And so, you know, there is the cheaper version. And by the way, I don't remember ever asking a doctor where he went to school. All right, my friends, we got an interesting video today about money and medical school. For those of you who are new here, my name is Kevin Jabal, physician entrepreneur based in Las Vegas, formerly in plastic surgery. For those who are wondering, this is Dong, because who doesn't love a little bit of Dong? And today we're looking at the Dave Ramsey Show, talking about med school and debt. And let's see what he has to say. I'm 26. I have my bachelor's. I want to go to medical school. I want to do a debt free. Um, I've heard you talk about it before on the show to go through like the military. Um, I tried going through them. I got disqualified. Like I really like don't want to go into all this debt, but it seems like like I don't know how I can do it without going into debt. Let me start by saying I don't actually I never have watched any Dave Ramsey stuff. All I know is that he is very anti debt and that he helps people who have zero financial education get to a very basic financial rudimentary kind of level. So I wanna start by saying it's great that Diego is concerned about finances up front because a lot of people who enter med school, they're like, yeah, I don't need to worry about that because I'm gonna be making the big bucks after X number of years. So it's good that he's thinking about it, but I don't know if you necessarily need to go to medical school debt free, it's about minimizing debt. And if there's a cost benefit analysis, there's a lot of nuance here. You can't just say black and white, all debt is bad. So let's see what Dave has to say. Where you get accepted to medical school is very, very important in the equation. Medical school is not unlike other forms of higher education in that some of that is four and five X what the other one costs. I haven't really seen that much of a spread of four to five X. That would be like one school having a $20,000 per year tuition versus another school having a $100,000 tuition. You see something more along the lines of two X. Uh, maybe two and a half X. I haven't seen four or five X personally. And so, you know, there is the cheaper version. And by the way, I don't remember ever asking a doctor where he went to school. <laughs> I get the sense that Dave Ramsey doesn't have much um, experience with like the medical training process and what that entails because where you go to medical school does definitely matter, especially depending on what kind of practice you want to have in the future, what kind of specialty, where you want to live. So yeah, where you go to med school does matter. And there are some financial focused blogs and, and people out there who will say, hey, just go based on cost. If you can save $5,000 a year at this school, like go there instead. I disagree. I think it's one of those things where you need to weigh a lot of different factors. And there may be instances where it actually makes sense when you consider all the things, location, specialty choice, et cetera, for you to actually go to a slightly more expensive school. I just asked him if he can fix that broken thing on me. You know, that's all I wanted to know. And, and if he convinced me he could, then we're there. I never really asked for credentials. Did you go to a, a big time med school or a little known med school? I didn't ask. He's right that most patients don't really care where you did your training. There are some snobby ones who will, but for the most part, they're not gonna really care. But it does matter depending on what you wanna do. So if you wanna go into orthopedic surgery and you're at a program that doesn't have any ortho program, then it's gonna be a lot harder to do so. If you wanna go into plastics or derm, same thing there. So if you wanna go into these more competitive specialties, your med school choice matters a lot more. If you're trying to become a family medicine doctor, then it's not gonna matter as much on average. Same thing with Caribbean versus US schools, right? And I talk a lot about that in other videos. Second thing you can look for is the MD PhD program. There's several <laughs> schools around the country that have those. And that's basically where you get on staff at the school and do some mm -hmm. teachings, like graduate assistant type teaching. And since you're a staff member, you get free or near free tuition. Uh, very, It's like getting a fellowship though. It's very rare, it's very hard to get in. You know, one in a mm -hmm. hundred. Okay, hold up. You don't just go into MD PhD because you want to reduce your student loan burden. That's not how this works. MD PhD is an eight year track rather than a four year track. So you're spending four extra years. And yeah, rather than taking out hundreds of thousands of dollars of loans, you are now getting a stipend of let's say $30,000 per year to live off of. Is that a better financial picture? Yeah, definitely. But then there's also the opportunity cost because you don't get the attending salary until four years later because your PhD takes an additional four years. So you have to factor that in if you're talking about just the finances. But more importantly, do you enjoy research? Because if you are not in love with the research, you don't love the scientific process, then spending an extra four years to get a PhD is gonna make you miserable. So please do not consider MD PhD as a way to minimize the student loan burden. Only pursue it if you actually want to become an MD PhD, a physician scientist. Christina Ellis's book, Confessions of a Scholarship Winner. Was she managed to apply for and get Get enough scholarships that she got a half a million dollars in scholarship. That'll pay for your med school, dude. 
Okay, so you need to do what she did in that sense because she ended up going, getting her undergrad and then went to Vanderbilt for her grad, paid cash for all of it, had money left over. Getting scholarships is very powerful and not enough people take advantage of that. I got scholarships. Mine was actually primarily a single merit-based scholarship based on my GPA and MCAT and competitiveness as an applicant that helped me pay off most of med school. But then you can also apply to additional ones like based on your background or your future career interests or your ethnicity, things like that. Linked below, we have a, a blog post on the Med School Insiders website that covers how to approach the scholarship process in med school, as well as a really extensive spreadsheet that has hundreds of different scholarships that you can apply to for med school. The other thing to keep in mind though is not everyone can get 500K in scholarships. So when you approach it, have expectations in check such that you're going to reduce your loan burden, but you're not gonna necessarily 100% eliminate it. The last thing I will tell you, and again, this is all just needle in a haystack stuff, but dude, all you gotta do is find one. A lot of the large pharmaceutical companies and large hospital companies are desperate to have doctors like them. Some of them have scholarship or uh, work for hire type programs, meaning that you can talk to a large hospital corporation and promise to work for them in a different setting, maybe at a reduced rate for several years. It sounds like he's referring to the PSLF, the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program, which is where after you complete medical school, they will forgive your loans after 10 years, I believe, of working at a nonprofit institution. I'm not so sure what he means about like reaching out to a pharmaceutical company and then having them pay out. Like there would be a huge conflict of interest there. And I don't think that that would ever fly because uh, that would be influencing your treatment decisions as a physician. You can go to an, uh, an underserved area, an inner city area, a rural area where they're having trouble getting docks to park. And you go there and serve for three years afterwards. You get paid to do that. But in return for making that promise in advance, uh, it's a modern day indentured servant program. You, you uh, get free medical school paid for by them. Is that all of that worth it? Well, you've just got to weigh it out. I don't know, like the scholarships in the medical. Yeah, but these were not tied to anything. She used them for grad. No, she did, but I'm saying for Diego. Yeah. Uh, are there how, how, specific? Yeah, like are there- Specific for medical? I don't know. There are several scholarships that are specific for just medical school that are specific just for college. So you will have to read the terms for each one. When debt is not an option in your life, you have to find a new way of looking. It's not just this automatics. This is not cookie cutter. That's You're gonna right. have to scratch and claw and dig and turn over rocks until a crawdad runs out. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely not cookie cutter with when it comes to med school and paying for med school, it depends on your priorities. So for some people going to the military makes sense and for other people, it definitely doesn't. So even though the military would pay for your medical school, it may not be worth it for you. Like it definitely wasn't worth it for me to consider military, even though the cost would be covered. Other people wanna go MD, PhD. I know I say this word a lot on this channel, but it, it is a nuanced decision and you need to consider all the various factors, even the city you live in. You're gonna be in med school for four years. So if you're going to a city that you just hate and despise and you're saving $20,000 in the grand scheme of things, probably not worth it. So keep that in mind and remember that you don't have to graduate med school with zero debt to be successful and financially free in the future. There is a way to intelligently approach your finances and still get through it and still be successful in the end, even if you do have to pay for med school the traditional way. All right, guys, hope you learned something. Hope you found that video helpful. If there's any other video you want me to react to, leave that suggestion down below in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, you may enjoy this one or that one. Much love, and I'll see you guys there.